uh, have a little trouble with my sound the first five seconds. So just have a look around. I'm showing um, precision and control. Uh, and I'm continuing by adding to my uh, use of my path mappers and different equations to be used in there. And I'm actually going farther into the split tree component and how you can control that by lists um, and a certain amount of uh, paths. But right now my paths are not too hard. They're just one, uh, 10 branches with 156 items on them. So um, I did have a script before this 100, which I probably am not going to show because it's wrapped into here. But basically, yes, I start with uh, a geometry. I find points on it. I bring it up, and that's the first section to build a pointed geometry that's actually uh, branches with items in branches. So you know you're dealing with lists of lists because of the dash line. The second section is really manipulating that, uh, and you'll see that I actually manipulate it with this bottom section of the split tree. But right now you have to get into using the path mapper, and I've uh, used a cube root, square root, uh, leaving it alone, uh, fourth root and sixth root, to manipulate the geometries to come up with some very different things. Um, really nice subtle form changes and controlling the curves on the objects. Uh, and there they are. There's an example of one, but actually I've actually used the uh, split tree to get to that form. This one's actually quite a bit more, um, uh, has quite a few more points operating in that one. The next section is to do a variable pipe and rotate it so you come up with a decent shape. And the final steps are calling out and finding an index to what you want. Sometimes I call out too much and there's nothing there uh, for this example. But uh, I also went in and added this, and this is the main part of going in and looking at the script at the 101 or 102, sorry, 101 and 102 out of 1001 scripts. Um, you're going to want to go in and use the split tree and bring in your data from each of your path mappers. Um, and then with that, you will find a point system that's much more reduced or it's playing off of this sense of series 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, all the way to the end uh, with all indices included. Uh, question mark will do that. Asterix will do the same. There's a little subtle difference in the asterix versus the, uh, I think it has to do with grafting or not, flattening it, uh, putting it into its own components or not. Um, but either way, I've run through a few tests that if you uh, grab this data uh, and if I grab the point items, uh, say this one, you'll see the point items change as I bring in each one of these. It takes a little second. Uh, sorry, plugged it into the wrong thing and crashed my program. So let's go back on that. And we want to put that into the masks, uh, flatten the mask. And you see all the geometries change shape as you do that. It has to react to, uh, obviously, that's including everything, 2, 4, 6, 8, uh, actually all the way up to 6, including all indices. This is counting 1, 4, uh, and then stopping at 6. Um, and you can just keep playing it with the numbers and then all indices and all, uh, all paths, and you should be left with everything again. So you actually start programming on this level and you get some pretty cool uh, f segments of what you're dealing with using the split tree as opposed to using the call index and the uh, call uh, uh, list item and call index. It always fails at some point and it's the same reason again, uh, the main one being insufficient vertices uh, for the curve, but that produces nulls and all you have to do is run it through a clean tree and you get back to your data and that's fine. Uh, just re make sure you remove uh, everything that is, uh, remove empty ones as well. That's usually set to false. These are set to true, but you're gonna wanna set that one to true as well. Uh, roll it through your form. Uh, there it is. And you can see subtleties as I change this out, have more and more data control over my shapes. So if you're into abstract art, uh, this is definitely something you might want to consider if you're sending things to print or making designs for lamps or furnishings or uh, want some kind of funk in your life. Uh, we'll see how that one changes. This one changes, obviously, as well. I'm swapping out pretty fast here, so uh, just bear with me and play with the lines. Uh, you can go and see Dan Rutten's uh, examples of uh, path mapper and data trees uh, on three, uh, Grasshopper 3D, and I would say go into it because he goes farther into it and actually starts running in different paths, like uh, if he chose uh, path zero, he'd have to use semicolon two, semicolon, and this doesn't work with this because we're actually not bringing in that much data. So there's no reason with this script to go that far in. But there's many, many examples and little shortcuts of what you can do here, and he shows prime examples of it, and I have it on a past video as well. So really nice, uh, simple stuff. Uh, that's a nice picture to show you what's being chosen and how things are being called out and patterns are being made. Uh, pretty cool. Uh, I'm not sure if this one's going to play off the form. Well, it does introduce a, a pattern here if I go low. 
uh, to a one count because they have so many items, so it's allowing one in. Uh, you're always having items over here, and uh, I'm just going to play around a little bit with the step. Uh, and if I choose a step one, I probably break it into more sections, I think, but it's hard to say. Uh, that one's not working. This one's coming out as four closed uh, breps um, because that's what I've chosen. Uh, should be three closed breps when I do that as well. Yeah, there you go. So you're, you're making less sections if you wanted to bake uh, and get control of different ones, bring it through a series. Anyway, I think that's a great, uh, awesome uh, data uh, and number. And you're thinking more computer-like as to what's being chosen, how your geometries are being made. Very exciting script. You can use it on any geometry. You can just keep going farther. Uh, if you take this path uh, here, very exciting and unfold all of, take out all these and decide to take it to the, uh, it's going to start to get less kinky as you take it up to more and more um, uh, square roots. So you see that one gets a little smoother on that. Nice little shapes, balloon shapes. And we'll just grab it again and put it into a sixth. Uh, which is pretty nice. It starts to round out again. Really nice, simple work uh, dealing with the path index to change your geometry. So there's an interesting one. Like, I don't know if you're thinking coat rack, coat hanger. Uh, play with these. Find your different geometries. Have total control and precision over them if you so choose to go in that direction. And then you're working a little deeper than going into your list items because you're you actually have your list. That's what you're doing. You're, you notice all these dashed lines. We're actually moving into a realm of lists of lists and then have to negotiate, negotiate them about, down to uh, uh, less units. But since you're starting with such a huge range of data, um, if I grab this point item and showed uh, it's shown what's coming out of here, um, if I can make that visible, you can see we have a very nice point system. And although I have it on, uh, yeah, orange is now for selecting. Um, it's a little more subtle and hard to see. But from that, you're generating those incredible nice geometries that are choosing the patterns of what happens. Thanks for watching 7 Minutes into Path Mapper, uh, script 102.